study of internet use violations um, of Ms. Walker at the Roosevelt High School. Um, first and foremost, what I know is that the teacher received a threatening email. These are high performing students that we're talking about that she's exposed to, that she offers a rigorous course and her work is challenging and she's a tough grader. Um, also, we know that this is a well to do community and last but not least that Ms. Walker is a new educator in this school community. The questions that I had were, it, and I'm looking, this first is uh, printed incorrectly, it was it her personal or professional email address that this um, uh, threatening email was sent to? Um, well, this informational email that directed her to the threatening website, was it sent to her per personal or professional email address? Um, were the principal, were her colleagues and principal supportive of a new staff member prior to in the what ifs could happen if we do one thing or another? Have other teachers in the school community experienced the same type of threats ever in the school? And what are the teacher parent conference procedures? If in fact Ms. Walker was having problems in um, addressing or redirecting her grading, had there been any meetings set up beyond the parents, the students, and the principal along with the teacher? And then last but not least, the internet policy. Your internet and computer policy was that um, reviewed. What is the problem? The problem in this is that the Miss Walker received a threatening email and we know that it was sent to her outside of the school day, during hours outside of the school day, that the threat was so serious that it frightened Miss Walker um, and that the email was sent from an unknown source. Um, that should just never happen. So the plan of action is to print an email, send items to the district, Print the email and screenshot the website. Send the items to the district tech department. Call my regional superintendent. Provide a safety plan for Ms. Walker. And then meet with my school leadership team. Communicate with students and families of Ms. Walker. And in this case, Ms. Walker's students are every student in Roosevelt High School. So every student in Roosevelt High School will be contacted and each of their families. So in doing so, I would gather those documents as I mentioned. I'd review for personal remembrance the interview and computer use policy, both for the students and for the staff because we're each given policies to sign off on contracts at the beginning of each school year. Request that Ms. Walker turn in her computer, the school issued computer, just in case um, the technology department would like to see it. And then also that no student be named guilty until all the facts are gathered. After having that conversation with Ms. Walker, I, I was fearful after sleeping on it because Randy may not have done it and we need not to point fingers, nor do we need to call in young people who may not have been involved. So in calling my regional superintendent, I would find out any other directives that I may be forgetting um, so that I would run down to him or her what it is I planned on doing. I'd contact my technology department, not mine, the district technology department so that they can tell me what to do and also um, how to send to them the information from the email and the website. And then I would also provide both departments, my superintendent's office as well as the technology department with Ms. Walker's information if they needed it. In doing that, I would contact Ms. Walker at the same time again um, 
that first I believe I would ask her to contact her union representative so she would never feel like she's in this process all by herself. I'd request that she remain out of school for a few days and my regional superintendent has given me permission to give her comp time, compensatory time, where she will not have to use her sick days nor her personal days, and that substitute service will be provided for all of her classes. Um, and if she receives any other threatening communications, to call me immediately. In meeting with my school leadership team, I would meet with them right away. I would share with them the details of the situation, asking them to keep the confidence of Ms. Walker's name out of it, um, and that they keep their ears open as they move in and out fluidly of our school community. In holding meetings with the teachers in the departments that they're responsible for and staff, I would ask them to not um, give the name of Ms. Walker, but to just let them know that there is an issue of cyber bullying and we need to get to the bottom of it. Um, and last that and last and first and in the middle, that our school is an open school and it's a community of safety and that we need to continue to have an environment of teaching and learning, learning and teaching. Communicating with the families and students is a part of my plan. Um, all letters would be sent to all the families explaining what has occurred. Um, I would talk about the legal ramifications of an action of this type and then I would provide examples in the letter of what happens um, and what are the consequences when you participate in acts as such. And then at the bottom, at the top, and in the middle, I would provide contact information if in fact anyone has any information of who, who could have done this or who did this. And they would be held in confidence, that information. Um, so the information is resolved in approaching it like that. Um, I provided safety for all my students as well as the staff. Um, the technology contracts were reviewed by the full school in a full school assembly and we had discussed the challenges so we could resolve these issues and we talked about cyberbullying as one of the more modern crimes, but it is a crime. Um, as a result of all that we did, the culprits were turned in. Therefore, they were given due process to give, um, they were given a due process in um, getting to the bottom of it and them admitting the fact that yes, they had done it. So we worked with reasonable, reasonable and collaborative punishment versus expulsion or suspension. So the young people will have to do six months of community service. And if in fact they don't follow through with their community service guideline contract that they had to sign, um, then in fact they could be suspended or even um, charges pressed against them. Um, after talking with Ms. Walker and the families of those students who were involved in this act, we decided that none of us wanted to see them go to jail. So I demonstrated integrity, fairness, and, and worked in an ethical manner because in our school, it's a school where teachers teach and students learn. Professional educators are responsible for the safety of all of their students. And in reminding my parents that, I'm asking the parents in turn to be mindful that the students need to provide safe spaces for their educators too, that this is a two-way street, and that overall for all of school community, offensive electronic communication is intimidation and harassment and is illegal. Um, so that we need to be mindful of that, and I always uh, move through this situation like this for um, my young people and for the educators. 
Also, that I demonstrated that the people were treated fairly and equitably and everyone was treated with dignity and respect. My leadership team was all informed so that we were all on the same page. Due process was given in not calling Randy out and his friends for interrogation after hanging up with Ms. Walker. I slept on it and thought about that. That wasn't appropriate to do. And that Ms. Walker returned to school where she was able to hold her head up high because she first met with the students and the families of the culprit. And then we just moved from there. Last but not least, a personal and professional code of ethics was used and demonstrated by giving a response of the opportunity to respond to their actions. Everybody, everybody was given due process. Um, that all the educators and all my staff in the building can now feel safe in reporting issues of harassment. Um, that no one will be pointed at or put down um, if in fact uh, something like this were to happen to them or if in fact they heard about something like this happening and that confidentiality would be upheld to the greatest degree. Very difficult in a situation like this that deals with a full school community or so many students because Miss uh, Walker um, teaches five full load classes and then she's also one of our advisors for um, the science um, club. So it, it, confidentiality had to be upheld. So we worked in those confines as well. However, we got the job done and I'm very proud of the leadership team at the school and I also have to take my hat off at Ms. Walker for keeping her cool and staying home and getting paid while she stayed home. So it was just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful experience, even in the midst of a storm.